War Room Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it. We have our guest uh, on the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline, and he is uh, from the NBA. Um, you guys know him. He he played for the Jazz, the the Chicago Bulls. I know I'm probably leaving something out, but he's now a member of the New York Knicks. So we definitely want to welcome into the war room for the first time, Ronnie Brewer. What's going on, Ronnie? Not much. How are y'all? Pretty good, man. Pretty uh, good. Man. Pretty good. Good to have you on the show, Ronnie. Yeah, definitely good to have you on the on the show. Um, thanks a lot for calling in. Uh, we appreciate it. But uh, we're gonna get right into it, you know, because you know we're just having a little conversation about the whole uh, black quarterback thing that's been going on this week. So now we're just mm-hmm. gonna switch gears, you know, because we don't want get we don't want to get you involved in that. So um, <laughs> we know uh, you were born in Portland, grew up in Arkansas, mm-hmm. spent a significant portion of your career in places like Utah and Memphis. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, you did live in Chicago for a while, but how's your transition to living in, you know, the biggest of big cities, New York? How's that transition gone, and, like, what are the biggest things you've had to acclimate yourself to? And it's still an adjustment. Um, like you said, I lived in uh, Chicago for the past two years, um, and that was a huge adjustment. But, you know, the simple thing about New York City, you know, that there's always people everywhere. I mean, it's not like... Right. You know, any time of the day or night, you never really see, like, emptiness. But uh, that's that's new to me. But, you know, everybody I've come across, you know, this is a town that supports their, their sports. So, you know, everybody I've come across really showed me a lot of love, showed the Knicks a lot of love, and, you know, I really appreciated that. So just trying to get used to the traffic, um, used to, you know, get used to finding my way around New York City. But other than that, man, it's been a smooth transition. Yeah, I mean, when they say the city that never sleeps, like, that's not a joke. <laughs> like, there's yeah. always somebody in the street. It's, it's always it's always <laughs> on and popping. Ronnie, what's up? This is B. Austin. What's going on? Man, I'm blessed. I can't complain even if I wanted to, brother. No doubt. Now, being that you haven't really gotten an opportunity to play in front of the home fans in the garden, mm-hmm. um, but just from your interactions with New Yorkers, either through the organization or from being out and about, how has the reception been from the fans and the team? I think you kind of started to touch on that. Man, the reception's been great. You know, everybody um, in New York City um, has said the same thing. I mean, they just want a winning team. You know, no matter how you get it done, uh, they just want to bring a championship back to the city. So, you know, I think everybody on this team is doing everything they possibly can to prepare for the season, you know, get in shape um, and contribute any way we possibly can. And, um, you know, uh, we haven't got to play in the, in the garden in preseason, but, uh, you know, as a visitor um, coming to the garden, you know, it's, it's one of the the greatest environments you can play as a basketball player. And, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to, to being able to call it home for, for the entire season. Uh, and every team that comes into the garden, you know, they're going to catch hell because, you know, we got to protect, <laughs> protect our house and, you know, represent the city. So I think we're going to do it very well. No doubt. Ronnie, this is TJ. Um, back on September 7th, it was announced that you'd be out six weeks after you under- mm-hmm. underwent your um, arthroscopic surgery on your knee. But I believe yeah. you made your preseason debut on, on Monday versus the Sixers in Syracuse. So yeah. uh, I guess how's the rehab going? You know what I mean? How's your knee feeling? And do you think that yeah. you'll be, be ready for the season? Um, my knee is doing very well. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's completely healed. Um, get my strength back. Ooh. But the thing, the whole thing uh, with that process is, you know, I've been off the court for six weeks, not been able to run, jump, uh, shoot, um, cut. So, you know, the, the last two preseason games is, is kind of just trying to, you know, get a feel for the game, get my rhythm back, get my conditioning back in my lungs, get my legs back under me. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a process. You know, um, you, you can – kind of simulate, you know, running on the treadmill, running in the, uh, the treadmill in the water, uh, biking. And, you know, the last week I've been able to practice, uh, you can simulate uh, different uh, game-like situations, but you can't simulate the game. So it's a different, it's a different pace, a different speed. And, you know, um, you know, I'm just trying to take it one day at a time and, and get back where I'm 110% and I can help the team out as much as possible. So 
uh, I made a little bit of improvement last night, and, you know, hopefully next game I can try to improve on that. Cool. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, Ronnie, uh, this is Akil, and I'm the uh, only diehard Chicago Bulls fan uh, on yes. the panel. And uh, for the last two years, man, I was rooting for you, uh, you know, hard. And uh, I noticed how, you know, since you came to the Bulls, you improved your uh, three-point shooting. So we had some uh, tough playoff losses, though. But uh, the question I have for you, uh, you've carved out a nice reputation in the NBA of being a good, mm-hmm. hard-nosed defender. Now, who has been some of your toughest covers, and which one of them has been the toughest cover? Uh, some of the toughest covers, I would, I would say, um, you know, Kevin Durant being, you know, he's 6'9", 6'10", and he has, um, you know, great basketball skills where he can play on the perimeter, he can post up and shoot fadeaways over the top of people, uh, get to the basket and finish with contact. Uh, and, he, and, and usually he plays the game the right way and making pass to, to his teammates and, um, you know, uh, causes a lot of defense, a lot of havoc. Um, I think uh, Kobe Bryant's up there just because, you know, he knows um, as his career has progressed, you know, it's like he has gotten better. His legs are not where they were when he was, you know, 21, 22, 23, but he's evolved where he, he has a post-up game, you know, he can shoot, you know, floaters with either hand, hook shots with either hand, uh, fadeaways over either shoulder, and um, to, to get guys invo- evo- involved in, in, in the game. Um, another c- tight cover is probably uh, LeBron and um, Dwayne Wade. You know, Dwayne Wade's a great slasher. He can get to the basket, one of the most athletic um, two guards in the league, and LeBron is just physically gifted where, you know, he's a lot faster, stronger, and can jump higher than a lot of players in the league. So those guys who cause problems. And, and the other guy to me who, who's caused, you know, for me early in my career, uh, the most problems was uh, Melo, which, uh, you know, I'm happy to be able to call him a teammate now. You know, with his size and quickness, his first step, it's really hard to guard him um, without having help or, or a double team. Uh, you know, he can score a lot of points uh, in, a, in a quick spurt. Um, and he can really change the outcome of the game. So, to me, those guys have been the toughest guys I've had to guard individually, um, and it really caused me a problem. Uh, the most probably has probably been, like, Kobe because, you know, as a, my rookie year, which was seven years ago, you know, he still had his legs under, under him, and he was able to do a lot of a lot of things. Uh, and I was able to see him progress and get better year after year and add something new to his game. So, uh, and I think LeBron is getting there because, you know, he's starting to post up a little bit more. But those two guys have been pretty tough, and I think Melo's up there too. Cool. Would there be, like, anybody – I mean, because these you name, like, the big guns. Like, would there mm-hmm. any, would there be anybody out there that surprises people? Like, you know, this dude really gives you trouble, and he's not really a big-name player. Um, not really. Um, <laughs> I, I think the majority of the people people already know about. I don't know. I think uh, Manu um, gives a lot of guys problems because it's his unorthodox game. It's because he's going left majority of the time, and guys are used used, used to going guys going right. Uh, to me, you know, uh, J.R. Smith. Whenever he gets it going, it, it's hard to stop him because he can shoot. He has so much range on on his jump shot where he can shoot threes at a high level. Another teammate so, now, so you're good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I, I have one for you. What about you know, at, at, quick, at times, quick. you know, I was when I was with Utah, we had to face Denver so many times, and he's had so many breakout games where, you know, he'd hit like six or seven or eight threes and, you know, get a steal <laughs> and have a highlight dunk that, you know, got the crowd going. So um, a lot of guys I don't think give him a lot of respect um, that he deserves. Uh, and another guy, you know, I, I respect him because, you know, he's a little older than me, but, you know, I grew up watching him back in Arkansas, and that's Joe Johnson, just because, you know, um, he's not re- really like a guy who talks a lot. That's why I ca- they call him um, Cool Joe or Smooth Joe. But, you know, he can post up guys, you know, to shoot the ball at a high level. Um, but, you know, at 6'8", 2, whatever he is, 245, 250, you know, he still can run the one, the two, and the three. And, you know, if you're trying to play small ball, put him at the four. So he's a master problem throughout the league. And, you know, I don't, I don't think a lot of people give him as much respect as he, as he deserves. I think the contract kind of magnifies, oh, he might not deserve that much amount of money. But if you look at his body of work, you know, he, he's had a successful career 
Um, I agree with you. I, I defend Joe a lot on the same principles. Like he he is he's a very versatile player. Like you said, that contract. Yeah. If you, if you, if you look if you look at him think. when he's in Atlanta, I mean, he basically had everything on their shoulders. So when they won, they won because of Joe. They lost, you know, they blamed it to Joe. Which I mean, that comes with the territory of being a superstar. But uh, you know, it warranted him one of the biggest contracts. So. Uh, yeah. You know, as critics and fans, they expect you to play above and beyond the numbers that you already have, even if your numbers are good. So, uh, you know, I I respect him a lot. Just you know, not only that he's from Arkansas, but you know, through all the criticism, he he continues to you know play his game and continue to do what he does. Yeah, and I'm excited about seeing him in his new situation too. You know, that's kind of like y'all our rivals now. Um, oh, yeah. And by the way, this is, this is Jimmy, uh, Ronnie. I have a question. I have a couple questions for you, and they're kind of outside of the realm of basketball. But we hear you're okay. a huge video game guy, so I have a couple questions. Are you an Xbox or PS3 guy? Um, when I was younger, I used to rock PS3 a lot. But, you know, uh, when I got into the league, a lot of my teammates stopped playing PlayStation. They, would, they switched to Xbox. So they, oh, they converted me to be an Xbox guy, and, you know, that was in the – you know, the whole so, so, when Call of Duty first came out and, you know, guys were playing. That's uh, what I was going to ask you. Are you a sports, sports guy or a Call of Duty type player? Man, I, I feel like I'm, I'm super versatile when I play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, to be honest with you, like, right now, you know, I've been super busy with, you know, trying to get back in shape and with training camp and, you know, when, I, when I'm home, I'm usually, like, just watching TV, relaxing and, like, icing or whatnot, but, you know, throughout the season, I really pick up, you know, to uh, playing video games. And I play 2K. I play college football. I'm not that great at Madden. I'm not going to lie. Um, All right, cool. But, but you know, I have to play college football. Ronnie, Ronnie, anytime, Ronnie, we got some players in the in the room. So, like, oh, yeah? Anytime, anytime, I, uh, anytime I talk to a professional athlete, I always ask them this question when it comes to video games. Are you one of those guys that, like, play with yourself and make yourself gun on the game? To be honest, to be honest with you, uh, you know, uh, I used to play video games a lot. So we we have this whole concept of, you know, if you're playing, you don't get to pick a team. Because if you're a good gamer, you can play with anybody. If it, if it's the Bobcats or if it's the uh, Heat or Lakers or Knicks. So we hit random. Bobcats. Whatever team you get, you got to ride with them. So that's how you uh, play. I heard that. All right, now my next question, on a more serious note, one of the uh, more mm-hmm. admirable things that we've seen about you is your foundation and that you're a mm-hmm. charitable guy. So – um, give us a little bit of information about the Ronnie Brewer Foundation. What exactly do you guys do? No doubt. Um, well, I started in 2006, and, uh, you know, my rookie year I saw, you know, th- during the season, you know, uh, with the, your respective team, they do a lot of stuff in the community, um, you know, because basically, you know, the NBA team, football team, whatever it is, they're role models in the community, Um where I grew up in Fayetteville, Arkansas, we didn't have a professional team. It was just Arkansas Razorbacks. And to me, you know, everybody looked up to the college players. And, you know, they could only do so much uh, with their time restraints. So I felt like it was my duty to to go out there and give back to the community because uh, basically that was the community that raised me. Uh, we decided to start the Ronnie Brook Foundation. Um, you know, my family's very involved in it. Uh, we give out you know, food for Thanksgiving. We, um, you know, do cold drives. We do, um, you know, Christmas present giveaways, um, scholarships. Um, we work with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we do a basketball camp. We're raising money to build a, a basketball gymnasium in Arkansas. And, um, you know, we, my first year, I felt like we were doing so much locally and, um you know, it, it gave me the idea that, you know, not only can I participate with what the team is doing, but, you know, I could go above and beyond that and, and do my own thing um, to help people uh, outside of just what the team was doing. So, you know, every season I try to do more and more in the respective city that I'm in. Uh, you know, when I came here, I saw that, I saw that the, you know, New Yorkers were showing me so much love and, you know, uh, I plan on doing, you know, the same stuff, exact things that I do back in my, my local city in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I plan on doing the same thing um, in New York. So, uh, to me, 
a lot of a lot of my foundation deals with the children. I feel like the children in our future and our community helps develop them and and uh you know I try to do as much as I possibly can in the community to help these these kids out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now Ronnie, we heard yeah. that you once climbed the stairs of the Sears Tower yeah. in Chicago for the Rehabilitation Institute of Chicago Charity. Yeah. That's yeah. a, an amazing feat, I must say. But what in the world inspired you to do something <laughs> like that? <laughs> oh, okay. So check this out. So we're in the NBA lockout, no basketball. I'm in Chicago. I'm like, man, I'm trying to stay in shape as much as I possibly can. So whenever, the, whenever you know, the call comes in that, you know, the lockout's upended, you can go back to work, you know, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be in shape. So, I got a call that they were doing this event uh, for the Rehabilitation Center in Chicago, and they were going to climb the Willis Tower. And I was like, oh, that's, that's not going to be a, a, a problem. You know, I'm an athlete. I'm in shape. Good deal. Well, little did I know, <laughs> it's like the <laughs> biggest building in Chicago, 100-plus floors. Um, and so I get there, and they're like, okay, every couple floors, you know, you have some water. You'll be able to take some pictures. But you really can't <laughs> stop until you get to the very top. So, you know, the first twenty to thirty flights of stairs uh, was pretty, pretty, pretty tough. But you know, as you're walking up up the stairs, you you see you know local firefighters with their equipment on, uh, walking with the elderly or people who have had work, you know, on their ankles, their knees, um, you know, have prosthetics, uh, different things like that, walking the stairs. So that's motivation in itself, and you know, they see you. As a as a professional athlete, athlete um, joining the cause to you know to educate and to raise money, you know that inspires them and to me that they inspired uh, myself to go out there and not quit. So you know at first I thought it was a, a, a huge mistake, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's one of the moments I'll never forget in my life, and, and I can tell you know my kids and my friends and family that that I accomplished and, I, and it was for a good cause. Man, and when you tell them, you got to take them outside of the Sears Tower and make them look up. <laughs> oh yeah, man! It's, it's, like I was, man, you, I was you just can, in honestly, Chicago. You can, see, you can see the tower hey. from about you know fifteen minutes to twenty minutes outside the city. You know, right? It, it's <laughs> one of the first biggest buildings you see. Um, you know, if you're in the suburbs of Chicago. So, uh, as I got closer, I was like, man, am I really going to be able to do this? But again, it, it was a great <laughs> experience. It was for a great cause and. Even though I was super tired at the end, you know, uh, I was able to take pictures with the participants and, you know, got a little award and get some media and press, which was was really cool, and it was for a good cause. So I really enjoyed myself. Yeah, I, I've been in there, and, and I was tired riding the elevator, so that's definitely <laughs> an admirable feat, man. That, that's, that's Yeah, no up. doubt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, what, what are your predictions the New York Knicks this season, Ronnie. You you have a hand in this. You were part of this. Yeah. Um, what are your predictions? Honestly, um, you know, uh, if we're healthy, I, I think we control our own destiny. Um, you know, we, we like it. You know, everybody reports we are one of the oldest teams in the NBA, but again, we do have a lot of young veteran players who who have been in the league for a while, you know. Um, you know, J.R. Smith, Melo, Omari, Tyson, myself, um, you know, James White I think is going to be able to help. You know, I, I think Chris Copeland um, has really stepped in it and helped us a lot. Um, Raymond Felton is going to be huge for us. Um, but then you got the veterans like Jay Kidd, Pablo, Kurt Thomas, Camby, um, she when he gets back healthy, uh, I think Novak is going to be a huge impact to this team. So there's a there's a lot of guys on this team who can contribute. And if we can stay healthy, you know, uh, and, you know, play defense, rebound, and low turnovers, uh, that's going to allow us to win a lot of games at home and win a lot of games on the road. And, you know, our goal is, you know, to, to be a top-four seed. And to be a top-four seed, you have to win your division. I think our division is one of the toughest divisions in, in the league by far. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. But if we do that, you know, we're taking it one step at a time. We won our division. Uh, our, our prize is going to try to be one of uh, NBA championship. I, I think it's something that that every team aspires to do. But you know, after the first month, second month, third month, you know, you see little by little teams dropping out 
uh, of that goal for the season. And, you know, hopefully when, when April comes around, that's still one of our goals and, and something we're work, trying to work towards soon. All right. That's, that's what's up. Um, hopefully y'all can knock off the heat, but I didn't say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, all right. So before we let you go, Ronnie, I mean, give everybody, you know, your website, uh, your Twitter mm-hmm. handle, you know, everything yeah. that you need them to know. Um, the Ronnie Brewer Foundation, everything. Yeah, I mean, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at, at uh, Ronnie Brewer Jr. at Twitter.com. Uh, my, you know, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I got Ronnie, Ronnie Brewer Jr. dot com. Um, you know, I can't. I mean, I could if you send me a message on Facebook, I'll respond. But you know, I can't really add friends on there. But I have a fan page on there. Um, I respond as much as I possibly can on on Twitter. Uh, sometimes it gets overwhelming, but I, I do try to respond as much as possible to the fans. And, uh, you know, on my website, you can find out anything you want to find out about the charity, uh, what we're doing in the community, what's our, our next event, um, and on my Twitter, too, because I, I update that myself every day. So, All right, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, we're, we'll definitely, you know, because we have a big social media presence, so we'll definitely get that information out to everybody. Um, Keep up the good work get, get at the foundation. Yeah, I appreciate it. it. I, I I think one of the things that that um, you know a lot of athletes, you know, when when it comes to media, you know, it's it's ninety five percent negative media. If it, if it's right. them not getting along with a teammate, not getting along with a coach, bad performance, uh, off the field antics. Um, but it's to me, it's that five percent that you know you find athletes that are willing to do go the extra mile and help and do positive things for their community, their city, and, uh, you know, the things that they're involved in. So that's one of the things that, that you know, I'm happy to say that, that I'm willing to do um, because I want to do it, not that somebody's making me do it, that, you know, it's, it's something I, that I take pride in and I'm willing to do, um, you know, from here on. Absolutely. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. We appreciate it. No I doubt. Appreciate and, it. You know, once the season gets going, you know, we we love to have you back on so we can check the progress of the New York Knicks and the, and the NBA season in general. So thanks for uh, joining us tonight in the War Room, Ronnie. We really appreciate it, man. No doubt. Thanks, I appreciate Ronnie. y'all having me. Ronnie, right. always welcome. Always welcome. I appreciate it. Hey. Well, wait, it's the War Room. Yeah. Well, five nights at the round table. Five Philly guys diversified and educated. 